In this video, we're going to talk about how to draw an audio mixer circuit. So basically, what we need is an amplifier circuit with multiple inputs. So let's start with the first input. We're going to have a capacitor. And we're going to have a potential meter. The purpose of the potential meter is to control the volume at the input. At the same time, it manages the input voltage so that it's not too high. It doesn't drive the transistor to cutoff or saturation mode, thus minimizing distortion. So this is the first input, which we'll call input A, and the second one is input B. So we're going to have a potential meter at both inputs. After that, we're going to connect them together. So this is going to go to the base of a transistor. And here what we have is an emitter resistor, which we'll call RE. And this line at the bottom, that's going to be the ground. And then we're going to have a bypass capacitor, which we'll call CB. The purpose of the bypass capacitor, it reduces the overall emitter resistance toward an AC signal, thus decreasing, actually increasing the voltage gain of the entire circuit. So it blocks DC, but allows AC to pass through. So without the bypass capacitor, the AC emitter resistance will be higher. The voltage gain is equal to the AC collector resistance divided by the AC emitter resistance plus the emitter resistor. But by adding the bypass capacitor, we can take this portion out of the equation, thus increasing the voltage gain of the entire circuit. So that's why it's there. Next, we have another resistor, which we'll call R3. And let's call the first potential meter, which is a variable resistor, R1. And the second one is R2. So R2 and R3, they form a voltage divider. The same is true for R1 and R3. So this allows us to control the input voltage that's applied to the base of the transistor. We don't want the input voltage to be too high because it could lead to distortion. And so if it does get too high, if you do get distortion in the circuit, you can adjust R1 and R2. So I'm going to set R3 to 10 kilo ohms. And R1 and R2 is going to be 10 times that amount, which will be 100 kilo ohms. The reason why I want it to be 10 times that amount is so that I can reduce the input voltage by almost a factor of 10 if needed. So that's the only reason why I chose those values. Next we have RB, the resistance associated with the base, and RC, the collector resistance. Now the capacitors C1, C2, and C3, these are coupling capacitors. They're used to separate the DC voltage with the input and the output circuits. You don't want the, the biasing of this transistor to be affected by the input and output circuits. So those capacitors are used to block DC but allow AC to pass through. So those are coupling capacitors. And then we have our collector supply voltage, VCC. Now VCC could vary. You could set it to 5 volts, you could set it to 9 volts, but I'm going to set it to 12 volts. As you increase the voltage of VCC, the maximum AC output voltage that can be generated by this circuit goes up. 
So you can increase the voltage gain of the entire circuit by increasing VCC. Another way in which you can increase the voltage gain is by increasing RC. So keep in mind, for this particular circuit, with the bypass capacitor, the voltage gain is RC over RE. Now, lowercase RC is equivalent to the parallel combination of the collector resistance and the load resistance. The load resistance being the resistance of the output circuit. So the parallel combination between those two will give us lowercase RC, which affects the voltage gain. So thus, if we, well, we can't always control RL, but we can control RC in a circuit. So if we increase RC, we can increase the voltage gain. But there is a trade-off though, because as you increase RC, the collector current decreases. And so the current gain goes down. So you don't want to decrease RC too much because that can reduce the overall power delivered by the circuit. By the way, for those of you who want more videos on electronics or even on just science stuff in general, check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting more videos in that area, so feel free to take a look at that. Now, going back to this circuit, I'm going to set RB equal to 47K. I don't want to set it too high because I don't want the base voltage relative to ground to be too low. It needs to be 0.7 volts or higher in order for the transistor to be on, but I want it to be much higher than 0.7 volts. Now RB and R3, they form a voltage divider circuit. So we can calculate the voltage at point B when the transistor is not connected to that point. And here's how you do it. It's going to be 12 times 10K, that's R3, divided by the sum of R3 and RB, which is 10K plus 47K. So it's going to be 12 times 10 divided by 57. So if the transistor is not there, the voltage would be 2.1 volts. But by connecting the transistor to that voltage divider network, it's going to draw current away from it, so the voltage is going to be less. It might be like 1.9, 1.8, 2.0. It's not going to be exactly 2.1 because it's pulling current from it. So we should expect the voltage that's a little bit less than that. Now, we need to decide what to choose for RC and RE. The typical beta value of an NPN transistor usually varies between 100 and 300. So what I'd like to do is make sure that RB divided by RE and RC, I like to make sure that it's equal to or greater than beta. So in this case, I want it to be at least 100. So if you divide 47,000 by 100, you get 470. So I want the sum of RE and RC to be no more than 470. So I'm going to choose RC to be 330. I don't want it to be too low so that it doesn't reduce the voltage gain too much. And for RE, I'm going to go with a value of 100. So even if beta it was 250, it won't be lower than 100 because the ratio of RB relative to the sum of RC and RE, that's more than 100. Keep in mind, these values, they can restrict the value of beta relative to its maximum value. Even, it's, even if its maximum value at, this, at a certain temperature is 250, if RB is not high relative to the sum of RC and RE, then beta could be much lower than what it's capable of being. So understand that RB and RC and RE, they can restrict the the value of beta. And remember, beta is the ratio of the collector current to the base current. So those resistors can control or at least restrict the collector and the base current, thus potentially restricting beta and thus affecting the overall current gain of the circuit. So just keep that in mind. 
So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to create an audio mixer circuit. And really the key is to have multiple inputs at the base of the transistor. So it's basically an amplifier circuit with multiple inputs. You can have input A, B, C, D, as many inputs as you want. You can mix multiple signals. But that's the gist of an, the audio mixer circuit. So that's it for this video. For those of you who like it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or even like this video. And also check out the links in the description section below if you want more videos on circuits and science projects. Thanks for watching.